We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you for your presence in our midst, oh God. We honor you, Lord, for loving us, Lord. With an everlasting love and conditional love, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, for loving us. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. And even as we continue, Lord, to know you more, we pray. Like you promise that you continue revealing yourself to us, Lord. May you continue revealing yourself, Lord, in your word, in our prayers, Lord, in our fellowship with you, Lord. Because this is our desire that we may know you and know you more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. 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 We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is such a sweet and a wonderful experience to be in the presence of the Lord. And one thing I love about being in the presence of the Lord is that in as much as we are doing it corporately, the Lord is willing to touch us at a personal level according to our expectation. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is according to our expectation. So I urge you to continue opening your heart and being ready and more expectant because the more the expectation, the more we will receive from the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. No, I love one thing about the disciples. An account is given about them in the book of Acts. And somebody said, those men were not learned, but they were with Jesus. They were referring to Peter and the crew, people who had been found as fishers, fishermen picked up and made to become fishers of men. But because of their time of their union with Christ, because of the time they spent walking with Jesus, their lives were transformed. Their lifestyle was changed. And the people who were given an account, they say, those men are not learned. But do you know what is different with them? It is because they were with Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You cannot continue to have an intimate fellowship with Christ and remain the same. You cannot continue having more and more fellowship with Jesus and remain in the same level of knowledge. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. A difference must be noticed. And that is why Moses said when he was pleading with the Lord and saying, Lord, let your presence go with us. He told God, what can make us different from the other nations? What can distinguish us from the other nation? If your presence does not go with us, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. In the world that we are living in, if we are going to be any different from everything that is surrounding us, from the norm that is happening every day, the only thing that can make us different is the presence of the Lord. Amen. And that is why today I want us to speak about being at the feet of Jesus. The message today is at the feet of Jesus. All at Jesus' feet. Hallelujah. Amen. We will continue to learn more and more of the Lord. Because as I told you last, well, uh, the last uh, two weeks, I told you, the Lord promised me that as I continue to speak about him and to teach about Jesus, he himself will reveal himself to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I, I have a testimony. I got a message and uh, somebody sent me a message and said, the way the Lord promised that he will reveal himself to you, the Lord revealed himself to me in a dream. I received a message and I expect to hear more and more testimonies. I expect to hear more and more encounters because as the Lord has promised, his promises are yes and amen. He will continue to reveal himself to us. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. All I ask of you is a desire. Desire to know him. Desire to experience him. Desire to have an encounter with him. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has appeared to people in the past and he is still doing it in our days. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to turn to our Bibles in the book of Luke chapter 7. Uh, that is where we're going to start our readings today at Jesus' feet. That is what I'm talking about today. Uh, Luke chapter 7 and verse 36. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to give, uh, it said you can check the index at the beginning of the Bible. It will give you the pages. I'm going to wait for you, flip those pages, get there so that we read together. Hey there. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash them with the hair of her head. We are at Luke chapter 7 and verse 36. I'm at 38 now. And stood at his feet weeping and began wash, to wash his feet with tears. And did wipe them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of a woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Sir, I have something to say unto you. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one who owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? And Simeon answered and said, I suppose that he, to him he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto her, unto Simon, You see this woman? I entered into your house, and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved you. Go in peace. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We are speaking about at the feet of Jesus. Or at Jesus' feet. And I want to ask you a question. If you would be given an opportunity to go to a very special place. Where would you choose to go? Some of us would say, I want to go to Hawaii. Some of us would feel they want to go to Disneyland. The Grand Canyon, the Niagara Falls. There's so many places we would choose to go. <laughs> Somebody saying you choose to go to heaven. <laughs> I hear you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But today as we speak, I want you to know that the most wonderful place to be is at the feet of Jesus. The most beautiful place to be is at the feet of Jesus. 
the most educational place to be is at the feet of Jesus. And the most beneficial place to be is at the feet of Jesus. We have read about a woman who was a sinner. And she was such a sinner that it was known. Everybody knew that she was a sinner. And here is Jesus. He has accepted an invitation to sit at the table or to eat or dine with a Pharisee. And while they are there dining, this woman comes with an alabaster box full of ointment. And she comes and sits at the feet of Jesus. And she washes the feet of Jesus with her tears. And wipes the feet of Jesus with her hair. And she continually anoints the feet of Jesus. And we find that the Pharisee looks at that woman and looks at Jesus and he says within himself. We are told he said within himself. He did not utter the words. He was just thinking. He was just reflecting. And he said within himself, if this man knew who this woman was, he would not allow her to touch him because this woman is a sinner. And I just love Jesus because he is all knowing. Even if this Pharisee did not utter those words, Jesus said to him, I have something to say. There was two people who had debts. One had 500. The other one had just 50. And they were both forgiven. Who rejoiced more? And the Pharisee answered and said, the one who was forgiven more was rejoiced more. He loved more. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And Jesus looked at the woman and said, this woman, she has been forgiven more. Your sins are forgiven. And today as we speak about being at the feet of Jesus, I want you to know number one, at the feet of Jesus is the place of pardon. It is the place of forgiveness. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This woman acknowledged her sins. She was weeping because she felt sorry. She was repentant of her sins. Yes, everybody knew she was a sinner. Everybody knew what kind of ugly things she had done. But she knew of a place where she can find forgiveness. She knew of a place where she will not be judged by the amount or the magnitude of her sins. And that is why she went at the feet of Jesus because it is a place of forgiveness. It is a place of pardon. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you heavy laden? Are you guilt ridden? Do you feel condemned? There is a place you can take your worries. There is a place you can ask for forgiveness. There is a place you can cast away your sins. It is at the feet of Jesus. And one thing that is giving us hope today is that it does not matter the magnitude of your sins. It doesn't matter how far gone you have left the Lord. It doesn't matter what ugly and evil things you have done. But there is pardon. There is forgiveness at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor it is a place of pardon. It is a place of pardon. In Psalms 32 verse 5 the Bible says and we're going to read very fast Psalms 32 verse 5. It is a place where we find forgiveness at the feet of Jesus. Oh, the Pharisee was like, if Jesus knew, Psalms 32 and verse 5, the Bible says, I acknowledged my sin unto you, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, another version says, I finally admitted all my sins to you. You know, the problem we have today is covering up our sins. We want to just justify ourselves and give excuses. 
Just like it happened in the garden of Eden. When man disobeyed. When God came down and to see what is going on. Nobody took up responsibility. Adam said it is the woman you gave to me. And the woman said it is the serpent. And the same cycle is going on today. When we fall short of the glory of God. Many of us do not want to admit our sins. But David is saying very well in 32 and verse 5. I finally admitted all my sins to you. And I stopped trying to hide them. The Lord is calling us back to stop hiding our sins. The Bible says whosoever covered their sins does not prosper. Praise the name of the Lord. And now that we know there is a place of forgiveness at the feet of Jesus, it is time we admit where we have fallen short of the glory of God, where we have sinned against the Lord, where we have transgressed in our thinking, in our actions, in our sin, in our senses, just like David is declaring, it is time to admit, yes, we have sinned. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And David continues to say, I will confess them to the Lord. And you forgive me. All my guilt is gone. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. At the feet of Jesus, after we receive forgiveness, all guilt is gone. You're there, you're trying to harbor at the scene, you're trying to hide it, and you're trying to cover it up. But today I have come to tell you there is a place of forgiveness at the feet of Jesus Christ. David is speaking about this. He had taken somebody's wife and he tried to cover it. He even commanded the husband to be killed. He continued to try to cover his sin. But the more he covered the sin, the more he continued feeling condemned and guilty. But in this verse he is saying, I have admitted. I have confessed. And after confessing, the guilt is gone. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. May today be a day you receive your liberty. May you never become a slave of guilt. May you stop being a slave of condemnation. Every time something is mentioned because of the covered sin, you feel condemned. You cannot be able to witness Christ with confidence. You cannot even be able to pray with boldness because of every covered sin and hidden sin. But today I have come to tell you there is a place at Jesus feet where there is forgiveness and the Bible says that whosoever the son shall set free they shall be free indeed Amen. praise the name of the Lord Amen. you are guilt is gone and the Bible says there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus hallelujah Amen. I read somewhere in one of the cards, as you go to check the cards where to send the cards for Christmas, and there was this one card, and I'm going to read what that card was written. It was a Christmas card, and this is the message that was written. I'm just going to read and summarize it. It says, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. But since our greatest need was forgiveness, then God sent us a savior. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The greatest need of a man, the greatest being of a human being is the need for forgiveness. And that is why God sent Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, if you read the book of Mardi chapter 9, quickly turn with me in the book of Mardi chapter 9. We are speaking about at the feet of Jesus or at Jesus' feet. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 2, the Bible says, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick uh, of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, Matthew 9 verse 2. You can write it down if you didn't get time to get there. Matthew 9 verse 2. So uh, the Lord saw somebody who was sick of policy. He was paralyzed. He was lying on the bed. And Jesus saw the faith of the people who brought this man. And listen to what Jesus said. Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven. Jesus did not tell him, you are healed, arise. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Because he has the power to forgive sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And if you read in John chapter 8 and verse 11, today we're going to be very fast and I'm going to read all these verses. So allow me to be quick. John, 11, John chapter 8 and verse 11, the Bible says, She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This is about a woman who was brought before Jesus. And the law of Moses commanded if somebody was caught in the sin of adultery, he or she was supposed to be stoned. And the silent men came, a group of men came and brought a woman. And they said, we caught this woman sinning. And the law says we should stone her. And instead of Jesus debating with them, he just bowed down and started writing on the, on the, on the ground. And Jesus said, if, if, if you have never sinned, be the first to cast a stone. And by the time Jesus looked up, everybody had left. And Jesus spoke to the woman and said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This woman case, she was already judged. She had seen death. She was prepared to die. But she bowed down at the feet of Jesus Awaiting that condemnation. Awaiting the first stones to start flying. And hitting her. But at the feet of Jesus she found forgiveness. She was not condemned. It is a place of pardon. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And number two at the feet of Jesus. It is a place of healing. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor a place of healing. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 30. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 30. The Bible says. Matthew 15. Matthew 15 and verse 30. The Bible says. And great multitudes came unto him. Having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. And cast them down at Jesus' feet and he healed them. It is a place of healing. Many came and they brought their sick. They brought their blind. They brought the lame. They brought the death. They brought many with many illnesses, many sicknesses. And what did they do? They cast them at Jesus' feet. And what did Jesus do? Jesus healed them. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Jesus healed them. At the feet of Jesus there is healing. First Peter 2 verse 24 the Bible says. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we be dead of sins. Should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. Amen. At the feet of Jesus, it is a place of healing. Psalms 103 verse 3 says, Who forgives all your iniquities, who healeth all your diseases. He heals all our diseases. You can find healing at the feet of Jesus. And our main verse, remember, Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and, yesterday. and forever. He is the same. He is 
the same who was healing when people were cast at his feet he healed and even today if we bring all that are sick at the feet of Jesus he is able to heal his power is not diminishing his power is not limited he is the same and when we talk about being at the feet of Jesus for you to be able to reach at the feet of Jesus it calls for an action of humility an action of laying down and casting aside your pride praise the name of the Lord your pride, your hatred, any jealousy, any envy, anything that can make you not humble yourself. Because you're not going to reach the feet of Jesus standing up. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It is time for us to experience healing at the feet of Jesus. Is anyone sick among us at the feet of Jesus? It is a place of healing. And number three, at the feet of Jesus, it is a place of learning. And this we find from the book of Luke chapter 10 and verse 38 to 42. This is one of my favorite passages when I speak about the feet of Jesus. The Bible says now it came to pass as they went, they ent that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Mother received her, him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But mother was cumbered about to much serving and came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bind her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Mother, mother. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good path. We shall not be taken away from her. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Every time I read about this, I sometimes see myself as mother, so busy serving, so busy with protocol and the cares. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But Mary chose the feet of Jesus. Mary chose to stay at the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus she sat and listened as the Lord was teaching. At the feet of Jesus, she sat and learned what the Lord was teaching. May we desire to learn of the Lord. May we desire to sit at the feet of Jesus. Yes, we want to serve. Yes, we want everything to be in order. But let us not forget in the midst of our busy schedules, the one thing is needful. The place where we can learn is at the feet of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So in the midst of all the cares, in the midst of all the responsibilities that we have, may we take time to rest at the feet of Jesus and learn from him. Because there is so much the Lord is willing to teach us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And you know, when you don't stay at the feet of Jesus, it is easy to get worked up and angry in the busyness and in the, in the serving. We find mother is so busy and she's not just busy, but she's getting angry. She comes to Jesus and says, why don't you tell my sister to help me? Can't you see? I am here trying to make sure that everybody has food. And you know, whenever Jesus went somewhere, because he had a company of 12 and many more, it meant, it, it meant it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big group that you have to care for. So I believe that mother had every right to be angry with the sister. How do you make food, prepare food for 12 men alone? And you have a sister who has just chosen to sit at the feet of Jesus like the men when they are listening. She is there listening. 
But you'd expect that Jesus would tell Mary, please Mary, can you go and help your sister? We need to eat. But Jesus said, mother, mother, you worry and you care for nothing. One thing is needful. And this takes me back to the verse that we have been reciting and saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all the other things shall be added. Before you go and get busy out there, stay at the feet of Jesus. Have time to learn from the Lord. Because at the place, at the feet of Jesus, it is a place of learning. Number four, it is a place of prayer. Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. The Bible says, And behold, there came one of the rulers of synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray that you come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she may live. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This is a ruler. He's a man of authority. But he comes at, at, in the presence of Jesus and he does not stand. He comes and prostrates himself at the feet. He fell at the feet of Jesus and he made a prayer. He said, Jesus, my little daughter, is lying. She is at the point of death. I pray. She made prayer. At the feet of Jesus, it is a place of prayer. We find that this ruler lays at the feet of Jesus and prays. And you know the story. When we recount all the people that Jesus rose from dead, this daughter is one of the people that Jesus rose from dead. Praise the name of the Lord. Numbers 20 verse 6, the Bible says that Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly and to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and they fell upon their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the feet of Jesus, it is a place of prayer. And when you get to the place of prayer, the presence of the Lord and the glory of the Lord is evident. Praise the name of the Lord. When we get to that place of prayer, we find Moses and Aaron. They are people the Lord is using in a mighty way. Demonstration of power and miracles. But doing that does not hinder them from laying prostrate, falling on their faces in the presence of the Lord to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Joshua 5 and verse 14, the Bible says, And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, I am come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What says my Lord unto his servant? This is Joshua. God has told him already that as I was with Moses, I will also be with you. He's a man in a position of leadership and he's a man in a position of authority. But when he comes before the presence of the Lord, he does not stand as if they are equal. He falls on his face and prays. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When was the last time you fell <laughs> prostrate before the Lord in prayer? Or oh, have we become so dignified and we worry about our outfits, about what people will see of us. That we want to hold our status intact. That we cannot lay at the feet of Jesus in prayer. The Lord is calling us back to that place where we can just bow in his presence and seek him earnestly. At the feet of Jesus, it is a place of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five, I know my time is almost up, but allow me to conclude this topic because we'll continue with something else next week. Yeah, we, are, we are at the end of the month of January, so allow me, give me a few minutes, I wrap this up. It is a place of thanksgiving. At the feet of Jesus, 
It is a place of thanksgiving. Uh, you can write this down in Luke chapter 17, verse 15 to 16. Uh, the lepers who were healed, one of them came. And when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Verse 16, the Bible says, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks. And he was a Samaritan. You remember that story is about the ten lepers? Luke chapter 17. As they were going, one of them discovered, oh, I am healed. And instead of continuing with the journey, he goes back and he falls at the feet of Jesus and gives thanks. It is not just going at the feet of Jesus when we need prayers. It is not just going at the feet of Jesus when we need healing. And it's not just going at the feet of Jesus when we need to, to, to seek forgiveness. But at the feet of Jesus, we can go there and as a place of thanksgiving and give thanks to the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalms 100 and verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, sometimes we tend to remember thanksgiving only in the month of November. But even now in January, let us go at the feet of Jesus with thanksgiving because it is a place of thanksgiving. We can count our blessings. We can name them one by one and see how much the Lord has done when you are marveled and when you are amazed at the doings of the Lord. You can go at the feet of Jesus with thanksgiving. This man was not even an Israelite. He was a Samaritan, but he knew the secret. He went and fell at the feet of Jesus with thanksgiving. He glorified the Lord. He blessed the name of the the Lord and you guess what at the place at the feet of Jesus the place of thanksgiving this man was made whole his miracle was complete praise the name of the Lord you want a complete miracle you want to be made whole get into a lifestyle of thanksgiving go at the feet of Jesus and tell him thank you have uh, there been prayers excuse me prayers that you have been praying and part of them have been answered and part of them are not yet answered. Instead of complaining, instead of just waiting there doing nothing, let us go at the feet of Jesus because it is a place of thanksgiving. We can go with an offering of thanksgiving at the feet of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Number, number six, it is a place of rest at the feet of Jesus. It is a place of rest. You know, sometimes we get weary. Sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we get fatigued. Sometimes we experience burnout. And many a times people will tell you, just switch off and refresh. But if there is a place of rest, it is at the feet of Jesus. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 35, uh, the Bible talks about a man who was demon possessed, a man who had been naked, a man who had uh, who was living in the tombs. He used to cut himself with stones. He was uncontrollable. They had to bind him with chains. And then when Jesus came to the area, Jesus set him free. And verse thirty-five it says, "Then they went out to see what was done." And came to Jesus and they found the man out of him. The devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. At the feet of Jesus, it is a place of rest. This man had been tormented for many years. His own people had disowned him. Because they could tie him with chains and he could break the chains. And all he did was cut himself with stone and he lived in the tombs. It must have been overwhelming and stressful. But when this man was set free, he sat at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us not become the people who receive from the Lord and then that's the end of it. We don't get back to the Lord. If you need rest, you can rest at the feet of Jesus. 
Matthew chapter 11 verse 29, the Bible says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Are you in need of rest? At the feet of Jesus, it is a place of rest. Praise the name of the Lord. Number seven, it is a place of comfort. At the feet of Jesus, it is a place of comfort. The same women, Mother and Mary, we find them again in John chapter 11 and verse 31 to 32. They were mourning their brother. They had sent for Jesus when Lazarus was sick, but Jesus tired. He didn't come when he was sick. And so Jesus came and Lazarus was already dead and buried. In verse 31, the Bible says that Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her. When they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her saying, she goes unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So we find the Jews that were comforting Mary. When they saw her rise up, they thought she was going down to the grave to cry more. But Mary was headed in a different direction. She was headed at the feet of Jesus. And that is where she found comfort. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 20 to 22. This is about a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. She had used everything that she had. She had used everything that she had. And the Bible says, Behold, when she came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, If I may touch but his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said to her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made you well. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Amen. At the feet of Jesus. It is a place of comfort. Amen. This woman had used everything that she had for 12 years. But when she fell at the feet of Jesus, she was comforted. She was healed. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And lastly, it is a place of worship. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 12 to 18. And I want you to stand as we read this. Let's stand on our feet as we read this. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. We're going to start from verse 12. Let's stand on our feet. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garments down to the foot, and girt about with paps with golden girdle, his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice at the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance went was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Oh, to feel the touch of his hand. What an atmosphere of worship. This is John, the revelator. He is describing how he saw Jesus. His voice was like the sound of many waters. His eyes were like fire. And when he saw this great 
great, great and, and full of splendor. He fell down at his feet as he was dead in worship. And what happened? Jesus stretched forth his right hand, touched him. The feet of Jesus is a place of worship where we can fall prostrate at his feet and there is room for everyone and where we can all experience his presence. Revelation 22 verse 17 it says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that hears say, Come. Let him that is thirsty, Come. Whosoever will, let him take the waters of life freely. At the feet of Jesus, there is no protocol to be observed. There are no people who are pushed aside that they cannot.